In this video, I want to show you how to emit business related metrics in Java EE applications using the Prometheus format. Prometheus is a de facto monitoring solution that can scrape and efficiently store all kinds of bit metrics from enterprise applications. So in order to integrate that with Java EE, there are a couple of solutions around. One is the um, so-called Firehose project from Adam Bean that uses well a JSON um, output format from the applications. And this is um, a solution that scrapes that JSON output format in order to emit the Prometheus format. Or we use, for example, the Prome uh, Prometheus API, the Java API to directly output um, Prometheus formats. And I want to show you this right now. So I have a Java E7 project here, which is empty, that uses for now only the Java EE API, Java E7 API that is provided. And I want to show you how to create business related metrics that will be emitted using the Prometheus format. In order to do so, we use the API that we will get by um, including the dependencies that are from the group ID IO Prometheus and the artifact ID simple client in version 0.0.26 and again the simple client common artifact. These two things are needed to integrate Prometheus using the, um, the Java API. And now we will have some kind of business um, business motivated bean, right? I call this coffees. This will be a CDI application scoped bean that will be used to, let's say, retrieve coffees, right? The coffees will be returned by a string, right? And now we want to, let's say, count the number of coffees that have been consumed. So, for example, we want to have, we want to count the total numbers of coffee that have been consumed. Therefore, we can use the Prometheus type counter. There are a couple of Prometheus, uh, Prometheus types around. Counter is one of them that is, well, an increasing number. It doesn't have to be an integer number, but a number that will increase over time to um, emit all kind of metrics. In this case, the total number of um, consumed coffees. We will use the builder pattern to um, create these. For example, total coffees consumed. Something like this. With the name of the metrics and a description. And we use the register method to register this counter at the default um, Prometheus registry. And this will be um, this will be stored in the field that we call consumed coffees. And now this is a Prometheus matrix. And now somewhere in our business logic, for example, here in that method, we can use and increment this counter appropriately. For example, we use the increment method that will increment the number of consumed coffees by one per default. And this is it for our business logic. So now we will use, let's say, a coffee's resource to access our coffee. Let's say we call this coffees or coffee in singular, get one coffee and we return what was created using our coffees resource. Coffees retrieve coffee. And this will be output. And now we can re retrieve a coffee that will then increment this metric. So now, of course, we have to access this somehow. So there needs to be some kind of HTTP endpoint that will emit this. There is a Prometheus um, functionality around that basically is a servlet that will output all these metrics. 
and the service can be um, con configured using the web XML deployment descriptor. This is one way. If we don't want to use XML in this case, we can also easily integrate this um, via code. This is now a more um, custom tailored solution. Both solutions are fine. I call this metrics resource. So we will we will define a JAXRS resource that will now access all these metrics. And the nice story about this by calling this dot register method when we created our metrics, this will be registered in the default registry um, provided by Prometheus. So now we can decouple our logic here and just access that registry and it will take all the registered um, Prometheus metrics all over our code base in order to output them. So we don't have to um, wi uh, manually wire them up here. This means we will have another get method that will output our Prometheus metrics here. They are they are expected to be no, this is the wrong media type to be in media type text plane, and then we can output them as string or so-called streaming output, which is a JAXRS type to stream all the output there. To emit the metrics and in order to do so we will use a lambda output to well access this while well, try with resource block so we will have a writer that will be um, created by an output stream writer that will use our output here in order to well emit our metrics that can be accessed using an internal um, API text format, uh, which will write the output in the specific Prometheus um, Prometheus output version. So the Prometheus, Prometheus format has a specific version that we can use here with our writer and the, well, the collection of all the metrics. And we get this um, number of, of metrics by um, taking the collector registry with the default registry. This is the default registry that we used calling the dot register method. And we would just take all of the metrics there. And this will then be emitted to the writer that is hooked up to our well, streaming output in JAXRS. And that's it what we need to integrate um, Prometheus with the JAXRS with our JAXRS custom resource. And now we can run this. I will build this project using Maven. So I can call Maven clean package to build it, which will be built into a small WAR file. And then I can use Docker, for example, to run this. I'm a fan of, um, of shell scripts. So this shell script actually creates a Docker file that already uses Tommy and it searches for a WAR file here that already creates um, everything. It takes the WAR file, puts it into the auto deployment directory and runs this using a Tommy 8 version. And that's about it. Then we can call Docker build. Hello Prometheus version, let's say version one, and we build this. Now our Docker image has been built and we can Docker run it using, well, the local um, por the local por publish port to localhost 8080 with our image hello prometheus 1 that's it now tommy runs and deploys everything and we can use a second terminal to access tommy here running in a docker which is called hello prometheus resources is our application path from jaxrs and this is called coffees and then we get an exception because it's called coffee and now we have our coffee one two three and now we can ask the metrics here which is here the prometheus output format so this is how the prometheus uh, format looks like with our metrics of the coffees consumed, which is now three, which again, we can increase. 
And this is the way how to um, integrate Prometheus here with the Prometheus API that will be called in our business logic and output either in the normal Prometheus servlet that is provided and can be configured using WebXML or a standalone custom JAXRS resource. And now, then in a further step, we can configure a Prometheus instance to go against this URL to take and scrape the metrics in a specific um, time format. And this will then take the Prometheus output format to include this. So I hope I could uh, get the idea around how to integrate this in a lean solution with Java EE and use the um, Java E7 and Prometheus API. So now, of course, you might think, well, we included this into a Docker file, which is a bad idea because now if you look at it, our WAR file gets quite big, right? Uh, 61 kilobyte, this is way too much for a lean and small Java EE solution. So what we actually want is to include only our business logic and leave everything else to the server. So we don't want to ship an implementation because there is no point in shipping the Prometheus API, right? That is That can already be included somewhere. And rather than doing this here, we want to ship the API in our Docker image, right? In a step, in a build step that comes before our actual um, application. That means we can copy our Prometheus API here into the application server already and then just use it afterwards. In order to do so, we can have a scope provided. And this is what we actually want, right? Because then all this stuff will not end up in our WAR file. And this is true for all kind of dependencies that we want to use here. And in order to do so, let's create a directory Docker and then let's copy these two dependencies that we used, um, the simple client dependency and the simple client common dependency into this Docker um, um, directory. You don't have to do this in the project. Normally you would already have a pre-configured um, Docker image with all the needed dependencies somewhere in your company or somewhere from another project, right? And then just use this as a base image. And then in that case, you would use the Docker file from Tommy, including Prometheus already configured, right? But in this case, to make it simple, we will include all the jar files from the Docker directory and put them into user local Tommy lib to pre-install them to the Tommy um, um, library directory so they will be available for the class path there. So that means now we can rebuild our WAR file. So now we get what we actually want, a very small WAR file that only contains our business motivated um, classes. So everything that we actually write and nothing else, no jar files, no libraries. And then we can docker rebuild into hello Prometheus version 2, which is now oh, it's a very important step. You always want to end your directories with a slash, which now uses the, the WAR file that is way smaller. And now if we rebuild and redistribute our Docker image, the last step only will be re-executed because everything else can be cached that you can already see here, right? And this will be faster to transmit. And then we can run it, Docker run, now version two. And hopefully have the same out output with our coffee and the metric coffee and the metrics here number of coffees equals two and now in a thin war file approach which is, which is um, advisable to do so right 
and I hoped I could now get the idea across how to implement this and still maintaining thin WAR files and zero dependency applications. And all these um, examples and much more are uh, part of my book, Architecting Modern Java EE Applications, that will show this Prometheus example and also show how to run this in a Kubernetes cluster environment, including Prometheus and our, and our application. And if you're fast and pre-order this until the end of October, you can use this discount uh, code to get a 40% discount on the ebook or a 10% discount on the print copy. So thanks for watching and bye.